Hey, this is Ann Dalliano, and I'm here in Austin with Mr. Mark Katz. Now, Mark Katz is a famous deli owner here in Austin. Katz's Deli, you probably have all heard Katz's Never Closes, I Gotta Tell Ya. So, Mark, thanks for sitting with us today. Thank you for yeah. the opportunity. This is great. Listen, when did you come to Texas, and how did you fall in love with Texas so much that you want to sacrifice all your time and energy to run to serve the people of Texas? Well, I moved to Texas in the late 70s. Okay. I fell in love with a Texan before I fell in love with Texas. That's what brought me here. You know, I've been here 35 years, and I've never seen a worse executive branch of our government anywhere, any place, any time. This is shocking. We are on the brink of disaster, and these guys are telling me that we don't have a recession. I'm telling you, that if I lived in a house that was rented by the state for 10K a month and I had a nine foot fence around it, I tell you there was no recession either. These people need to get out. I deal with the people every day. We're on the hard times. Nothing is not the answer. We need to come up with something to do about this. So, uh, what is it that really motivated you to run? Now, you know, getting aggravated is something a lot of us do at home. You have reported uh, that you're ready to spend six digits right. of money, yours or your family's. Right. You're going to put a lot of time into this. It's a huge sacrifice to serve like this sure. and campaign like this. What motivated you and told, just made you decide, I've got to do it? Two very important things. One, the need and the opportunity. That's one. Need and under that opportunity. I don't feel that I could possibly have a weaker opponent than Davy Dewhurst. See, when I first started at this, because I didn't go to high school here, and I never held statewide office, I really didn't know what the lieutenant governor did. So I used the incumbent as an example, so I figured he does nothing. But now that I see what's involved, he's, it's the most important job in the state. Yeah. The most important elected official in the state. He presides over the Senate, among many other things. We have nobody doing that job right now. I could do that job. The second reason I'm doing it is I'm first born in America. We are very proud of how far we've come. I have an opportunity to do something that my father and his generation provided, set up for this. I'm giving it all I got. My family is very proud of me. I'm very proud of me. We're not giving up this opportunity. I'm running with Davey to the end. That is wonderful. So tell us about David Dewhurst and his weaknesses. What is it that you've seen? Well, that's the problem. Most people, when I tell them I'm running for lieutenant governor, ask me, who's lieutenant governor now? The other, then if they know the name, I ask them, tell me one thing David Dewhurst has said, and they cannot. Good point. So he really hasn't done anything. He didn't run the legislature. I mean, when we had people of Bob Bullock's caliber and lieutenant governor, he was one of the strongest people in the nation certainly in Texas. But now with Dewhurst there, Texas is losing its strength. It's losing its dominance. We were globally important in energy. Now drill baby drill is not the answer anymore. We've got to keep drilling. We've got a lot of oil, but there's wind. There's all kinds of renewable fuels. There's a whole industry out there called green collar. We could do stuff now that could put Texas again in the global center of the world for energy, for technology. We were there. We have, the, we have the infrastructure. We're just not doing anything about it. We have the people. We need to educate our people. We are undereducated. One quarter of our school-age children live in poverty. What I really want to tell you is thank God for Mississippi. Because if it wasn't for Mississippi, we'd have the worst school system in the nation. Mississippi, I can understand. They're very poor. We're very wealthy. Our government is taking the very few elite and they're benefit benefiting, and everybody else like you and I, we're just hanging around. We have the highest rate of high school dropout in the nation. We have the lowest rate of insured people for health. 75,000 people a year, Texans die, according to the TMA, the Texas Medical Association, because they don't have health insurance. A woman is 40% more likely to die from, from breast cancer if she doesn't have health insurance. I say, if you're living in the real world, you know we need health care now. Granted, what's up in front of us right now is not perfect, 
But you know how you eat an elephant? How's that? One bite at a time. We need to start somewhere. We need to start with this program. It's not perfect. Seven presidents have been unable to pay us health care. We need health care in Texas. Health insurance in Texas has gone up 86% since the year 2000. How? How are we ignoring our own stuff? I feel that if everybody just puts everything aside and just looks at the terrible situation we're in right now, under Davy's eye, Davy Dewhurst, here on in referred to as Davy, <laughs> under Davy's eye, this has all happened. Balanced budget, that's constitutional. We have to have a balanced budget. We balance the budget by raising taxes for Texans through local and county and, and local county and municipal taxes. So we're paying more taxes. They're yelling balanced budget. We're not getting anything for the balanced budget. We're paying more taxes. We're paying more insurance. Auto insurance rates are the third highest in the nation. We're the slowest state in the nation to issue food stamps. Yeah. How do these guys know what it feels like to be hungry? How do these guys know what it feels like to go home to your family? If you're, especially if you're a single parent, mother or, or, or dad, and go home and your kids are hungry, and you're afraid you're not going to have enough to feed them. What are we doing here? That's a Texas great point. needs to take it back for Texans. Last time I checked, I think David Dewhurst has lined his pockets with uh, about hundreds of millions of dollars is what he's got. So um, he's not showing any ability to connect to the little guy here in Texas. None whatsoever. Yeah. None whatsoever. It's totally, that whole regiment up there is just totally out of touch. And we're paying the price. The thing that really bothers me is, the reason this happened is, as minorities, we all said, what difference does it make? We can't do anything about it. If we get out and vote, there are eight minorities that I have in mind in this state. If we all get together, we can make something happen. We are the majority. Governor Perry was elected with less than 40% of the eligible electorate, That's just right. that we didn't vote. That's right. So part of your plan will be to pull together a lot of the different minority populations and And activate. motivate them to vote, register Fantastic. them to vote for what's best for them. Right, I guess a lot of people don't realize we that minorities have the numbers already. Absolutely. Ha we absolutely, minorities have the numbers to change government. Race, color, creed, mm -hmm. sexual preference, yeah. disabled, come on, yeah. religion, National origin, poor, uneducated, disabled veterans, these are all minorities. To you add it all up together, we're a vast majority. We have to put a stop to this. So you're the man who's going to represent I'm the, guy. the little guy. I'm the guy. I love it. I'm the guy for 30 years, been shaking hands with everybody in Texas. I know the deal.